Good morning, Grade Eights, and welcome to your first e-learning history lesson. Please find the e-learning divider in your notebooks in the history section, not geography section, and write the date on a clean page. Remember, we did start off the mineral revolution in South Africa, but we did not complete the section. I will give you a quick recap, and then we shall continue. So, what exactly is the mineral revolution of South Africa? The Mineral Revolution in South Africa refers to the changes that took place after the discovery of diamonds in Kimberley in 1867, as well as the discovery of gold deep under the ground on Witwatersrand in 1886. By the time that gold was discovered, African kingdoms had lost their independence. The gold mining revolution laid the foundations of racial segregation and the control of white South Africans over black South Africans. The discovery of diamonds and gold on the Witwatersrand in 1886 was one of the most important turning points in South African history. The Mineral Revolution changed South Africa from being an agricultural society to becoming the largest gold-producing country in the world. Increasing control over black workers, closed compounds and migrant labour. You will find these notes on page 142 in your textbooks. The discovery of diamonds created a huge demand for labour. This led to a great increase in the number of African migrant workers who travelled to and from the diamond fields. Africans chose to work for cash wages so that they could buy guns and farming implements and so that they could earn enough money to pay Lobola. When diamond mining companies were formed after 1876, the black workers of a company were housed separately in a company compound, away from the white diggers' accommodation. There was some control over the company compounds for black workers, but not that much. Conditions in compounds were shocking and workers died of pneumonia in the cold winters because they did not have enough food and water, as well as warm shelter. Closed Compounds in 1885, the larger mining companies decided that the closed compound system should be used for all black workers. Closed compounds were built to confine black workers during their three to six month contracts. Closed compounds were situated on the mining site. Company owners began to realize that it was in their best interest to improve the living conditions of their workers if they wanted to increase the productivity of their workers as well as to increase the amount of control they had over their workers if they wanted to stop illicit diamond buying, IDB. IDB could be controlled if workers were unable to leave the compounds. They would only need to be searched once at the end of their contract instead of after every shift on the mine. The easiest way to smuggle a diamond out of a mine was to swallow it. When black mine workers' contracts ended, they had to remain a further eight days on the compound. They were fed a strong laxative to make their stomachs work and had to wear thick round gloves so they could not pick up the diamond and swallow it a second time. The British planned to strengthen their position in Southern Africa. The British wanted to strengthen their position in Southern Africa after the discovery of diamonds. Rich people in Britain wanted to invest their money in mining these minerals. To make it less risky for them, they put pressure on the British authorities in Southern Africa to take control of the areas where diamonds had been found and to take control of the areas from which people would be recruited to work on the mines. In order to strengthen their position, the British authorities would have to further dispossess the remaining African independent kingdoms of their land. The Boers were also looking for more land and more labourers to work on the land they had conquered in the Boer Republic. Republics. By the late 1870s, the Kosa, Peri and Zulu kingdoms remained independent. The Boers were not strong enough to defeat them and encouraged the British to conquer these independent African kingdoms. In this way, fewer Africans would be able to farm for their own living. Instead, they would be forced to work for wages on white farms or on the diamond mines. However, after long and bitter wars of resistance, the Kosa were finally defeated in 1878, the Peri defeated in 1879, and the Zulu finally defeated in 1879 as well. All this fighting and resistance just because of gold. Why on earth 
is it so valuable? In 1886, gold was discovered deep under the ground in a place in South Africa called the Witwatersrand. Gold is valuable because it is scarce, but that is not the only reason. Gold is valuable because it shines brilliantly when polished. It is beautiful to look at. It is used in everyday life for all sorts of things. It is extremely difficult to find. It does not rust. It is indestructible and conducts or carries electricity. It reflects heat rays and very thin layers can be used to cover windows to keep out the sun. Gold also mixes easily with other minerals. At the time gold was discovered on the Witwatersrand, gold was in a great demand in Europe and the United States of America. These countries were the most powerful countries in the world. Gold was valuable because currencies were backed by gold. This was known as the gold standard. This meant that countries had to keep gold in a bank vault to the value of the currency they issued. If the government of a country wanted to print more money, it had to buy gold to back that money. Okay, grade eights, that concludes our first history e-learning lesson. I hope you found it interesting and informative. Good luck with your tasks and remember that if you need any assistance at all, I will be available. Good luck and happy learning. Hope you have an amazing day.